Hey there, thanks for watching. This channel is The Well-Behaved Wallet and I'm Christiana. I make videos on getting out of debt, living prosperously, and building wealth. I am an expert in nothing except my own story and my goal is to share information that helps you to make wealth building decisions in your own life. Lately, I've been seeing a lot of interest around this idea of financial independence. I think that's great. But I think the reason for this is because this global situation that we're currently living in has made us wake up to the reality of our financial situation. The truth is that 78% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. And that's whether you're earning $600,000 or you're earning minimum wage at the local McDonald's. So if you are living paycheck to paycheck and all of a sudden your income source dries up, you go into panic mode, you're hustling to find extra work, you may have to struggle to decide which bills to pay or what gets paid, and eventually you may get to a situation where you're struggling to provide even the basic necessities for yourself and your family. If you haven't lost your income, but you're still living paycheck to paycheck, all of a sudden you're seeing people around you who are struggling in this way, and naturally that creates a sense of anxiety by proxy and empathy that's kind of going around, and it makes you, again, think about your financial situation and realize the reality of what's really going on. So I think this is what's caused the interest in financial independence, and I personally think it's a really good thing. It's so while more people than ever are taking an interest in their finances and getting serious about reaching their financial goals, I also feel like more people than ever are getting discouraged about what they're finding. And I wanna make very clear in this video that the tools that lead to financial independence are available to absolutely everyone. It is very simple to become financially independent. It is not easy, but it is very, very simple. And I wanna make clear again in this video that you can do it regardless of your history, regardless of past bad decisions, regardless of your income. If you don't think you earn enough, if you think that you earn too much and that your debts are are too high or that your expenses are too high. I want to make clear in this video that financial independence is for anyone. The reality is most people won't have the discipline to make it happen in their lives, but you can be the exception to the rule and that is why I am making this video. So here are the three main pillars of the financial independence movement. It's really the financial independence retire early, but I'm leaving off the retire early portion for the purposes of this video, because again, I think that discourages some people. And my purpose is to encourage and to say that, hey, yes, you can do this. So point number one is practice industrious frugality. Now this is different than what you may have associated with the idea of being frugal. Um, I know that in the past I've associated that with being like a penny pincher and being kind of miserly and stingy and watching every dime. And there certainly is a component of watching everything that you're spending and being aware of it. But I like adding that industrious frugality in there because this is frugality with a purpose. This isn't just being miserly for the sake of being miserly. This is being frugal and thrifty and intentional with an idea that you are going to reach a greater goal at the end of it or that you're going to a goal faster than you would have gone otherwise. So I like to refer to the quote from Benjamin Franklin, which is, if you are both industrial and frugal, you will be rich. That's kind of, that's a paraphrase, but that's essentially the essence of the quote. And it's, it's true. Those are the two things that will for sure lead you on the path of riches. If you know what you're spending, what's going out, and you monitor what's coming in, then those two things will balance out to lead you to a better financial situation. I wanna talk a little bit more about this idea of being industriously frugal because I think it is so important and I think that there's a really good reason why that's pillar number one because this is really the, the foundation, sort of the bedrock of all other financial decisions because if you're not right with what you're spending, then there will always be a way to out-earn your income. I've heard it said before that you can always out-earn your income and it's true whether you're making minimum wage or you're making millions of dollars. Think of all the movie stars or you know great figures that have gone bankrupt that have huge incomes. So again, I emphasize it is always possible to out-earn your income, whereas it's also always possible to save a portion of your income, and we'll get to that later. But again, about this idea of industrious frugality. So I just have to share this illustration. I have a friend who works in development and fundraising, and she was telling me about how she solicited um, 
like million million dollar donations like five six seven eight million dollar donations for causes from like children's hospitals to um, education foundations so she's done it she's familiar with that world of very high um high net worth individuals who donate to worthy causes and she said she was on the phone with one gentleman and she'd been courting him for a donation to a local children's hospital for a new piece of machinery and she'd been calling him for months and kind of got to know him a little bit. And he was he was really kind of a gruff, um, kind of kind of prickly on the outside kind of guy. But once she got to know him, she realized he really did have a soft heart. But she's kind of she had this number in mind and they'd gone back and forth over it. And it was on one of their, their last phone calls, she said. And all of a sudden he was like, well, I got to go now. And she's like, OK, well, I'll let you go. And he's like, you know why I got to go? I got a coupon for 50 cents off at CVS and they're about to close. And I just, I thought that was so perfect of an illustration. This guy is worth tens of millions of dollars, and yet he's worried about saving 50 cents at CVS. That is industrious frugality. And if you ask, if you wonder, that's how he got rich, was by being so careful in spending those amounts and being so careful in what he's saving as well. Being frugal can also be a very empowering thing that you're doing. You are taking charge of your finances saying, I'm going to find the absolutely best deal on this thing that I'm looking for because it's my money and I'm going to make it work the absolute best that I possibly can for me. So I know personally, this has been huge for me. The second pillar toward achieving financial independence is to save aggressively and invest wisely. Now, if you're in a situation where your income itself is precarious and you're having trouble meeting your basic needs, this might seem really intimidating to you. You're like, I can't even pay my bills and you're telling me to save? Like, what do you mean? So I completely understand that. The idea is to realize that no matter what's coming in, you can always save a portion of it. Say you get paid a dollar, you save 10 cents. And that very act of saving will start to set up a response in your mind that says, hey, 10% of this goes to future me. I'm paying future me 10% of this and just start small with whatever you can and then gradually over time that in muscle and that response becomes stronger and you actually feel good to know that you're saving a portion of your income and that a portion of that is set aside to sell to serve future you. Again, this has to do with progress, not perfection. So if you're just starting out, give yourself some leeway and know that you're not automatically going to be saving you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, 70% that the fire people recommend. Just start with what you can do and what's manageable for you right now. Make the progress and don't worry about the perfection. It will grow and compound on itself. It's also important to realize that, again, no matter what you make, it's always possible to save something. And if you're saving something, no matter what your income, be it large or small, you're doing better than the person that is saving nothing. So somebody who makes $40,000 a year and manages to save $50 a week is still doing better than someone who's making $500,000 a year and spends it all. So it's all about proportion. It's all about looking at that progress and looking at that those slow wins over time. Point number three is to earn additional income or to increase your income. Now I'm a huge fan of the side hustle. I had a whole series going on there for a little bit called my side hustle Saturday and I am still a big believer in the side hustle. I feel that however you can bring in some extra money in a way that serves you, you should do that and you should use your free time to be industrious and to help serve your future goals of achieving financial independence. That said, lately I've been transforming the way I think about my side hustles and being less reactive and kind of in the moment and thinking a little bit more long term. So it's kind of a challenge for me to invest uh, where, where you invest your time. If you're going to do something making maybe five or six dollars an hour, which is better than making zero dollars an hour, or you're going to take some time to step back and strategize. But again, the whole purpose and the whole overarching idea is to have a plan about how you're going to do this. So I would say earn additional income, increase your income and have a plan because a plan is key. So there you have the three basic pillars that lead to financial independence over time. Number one, live with industrious frugality. Number two, save aggressively and invest wisely. And number three is to increase your income or earn additional income. And these are all things that will contribute to gaining and building your financial independence. 
That said, you can do it faster if you do certain things differently. If you save more, you'll get there faster. If you raise your income tremendously, you'll get there faster. However, the goal is still the same. The goal is to achieve financial independence and to get yourself in a position where you're not relying on your day-to-day -day income and where you're not living paycheck to paycheck. Again, if you can be like the 22% of Americans that are different and not living paycheck to paycheck, that's a huge step away from financial instability and to financial independence. That's the overall goal here. And once more, I wanna encourage you to aim for progress, not perfection. No matter what mistakes you've made in the past, today is a new day. This is a new moment. Everything is changing and we're learning and growing in ways that we've never been asked to respond in before. So I encourage you to give yourself a fresh start and to not be discouraged by either these crazy projections from some of the crazy people out there that say, oh, if you don't do X, Y, Z, you're not doing it good enough. Give yourself a break and allow yourself to be motivated by progress that you have made and not be held back by mistakes you may have made in the past. So again, the point of this video is encouraging you to take a step toward financial independence, whatever that step might be. These three tools are available to anyone, absolutely anyone, any education income level can do this and achieve these results. So thank you so much for watching. And as always, I hope that you'll keep watching. Uh, check out some of my other videos if you are new here. And if you're a subscriber, thank you so much for being here. And if you believe that financial independence can be achieved by anyone, I ask you please to give me a like, give me a thumbs up. It would really help me out and I really appreciate it. So thanks again and I hope you keep watching. Bye.